Hello friends, I am Dr. Vijay Prakash and today I will be talking to you about impression techniques and spacer designs in complete denture prosthodontics. Now first thing which we have to learn here is that what is an impression? Impression by definition is the negative likeness or copy in reverse of the surface of the object and imprint of the teeth and adjacent structures of use in dentistry. This is a definition given in GPT. 8th edition and a very important definition given by Hartwell says that an impression is the negative form of teeth and or other tissues of the oral cavity recorded at the moment of crystallization of the impression material. One thing very important here is that you call an impression an impression once you take the impression material inside the patient's mouth, you record the tissues and once the there is a crystallization of the impression material that is the time when you remove the impression and your 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 teeth and adjacent structures are recorded as in reverse that is a copy in reverse now what are objectives of impression making there are five primary objectives of impression making we have already discussed this uh, one is preservation of remaining structures Retention, stability, support and aesthetics. I have already covered these topics. I will provide a link in my uh, discussion description. You can go through those videos. Now, now coming for further, let us describe what are various impression techniques which are used in complete denture prosthodontics. Classification of impression techniques on the basis of pressure used during impression making. This is one of the very bases on which impression techniques are described. One is mucocompressive technique, another one is mucostatic technique and the selective pressure technique. Then impression techniques can be classified on the basis of tray selection, they can be stock tray impression and custom tray impression. Other classification is on the basis of the type of impression. You can have diagnostic impression or primary impression, secondary impression and final impression. On the basis of materials used in, uh, in making impression, you have reversible or irreversible hydrocolloids, impression compounds, impression plaster and silicone impression material, impression waxes. So these are all the materials uh, which can also be uh, classified in various types of impression techniques. And on the basis of mouth opening, you have open mouth technique and closed mouth technique. And another classification is on the basis of hand manipulated functional movements. They are dynamic functional movements and passive functional movements. So these are all the uh, classification of impression techniques. Now let us discuss, take the discussion further and discuss on the basis of pressure which is applied during the impression making. Before going into detail about uh, those impression uh, techniques, let us learn what is uh, how is the denture base and how it is uh, governed by the mucosa which is over that. So as we all know in a completely edentulous patient the, the denture base area or the basal seat area is covered by mucosa and this mucosa can be of varying thickness. So it can be of varying thickness, it, it would be thick in some areas and it would be thin in some areas. It could be, now we all know that mucosa, below that you have the submucosa. So sub, the thickness of the submucosa decides what type of tissue those uh, are which are covering the basal seat area. They can be, uh, they are resilient tissues and some you will file they are not that resilient. They are non-resilient tissues. So we know that the tissues which are covering the bone, they are the resilient tissues. Now these resilient tissues, whenever we apply pressure on these resilient tissues, what happens that when we are applying pressure, those tissues are displaced from that position and as soon as the force is removed, uh, the tissues have a tendency to rebound back. So that is how we need to understand what are resilient tissues and non-resilient tissues. First the mucocompressive technique. Now this technique was popularized by Carol Zones and it records the tissues in a functional and displaced form. So here the materials used for this technique are mucocompressive in nature that is they are compressing the tissues like the impression compound and 
it 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 basically uh, makes sense that these impression materials would press the tissues in the same manner as uh, you have the chewing force as as if the patient is biting so uh, the proponents of this technique are tired olson jensen cantor tositano and brill which advocated that if you are using a micro compressive technique then it is better that you use a close mouth technique so that uh the patient bites and he or she exerts his own masticatory force during impression making and the authors uh, of this technique the proponents of this technique basically believe that uh, the occlusal loading during the impression making is uh, comparable with the uh, occlusal loading during function so if you see here when whenever you have the material it will be applying pressure on to the tissues so these tissues are going to be displaced further in as the patient bites or whenever you are applying force so so you all know that the oral tissues are resilient in nature i just described that a while ago and as the tissues are recorded with a pressure method in this technique the soft tissue tend to rebound that is the rebound phenomena that tend to as soon as you remove the force these tissues tend to rebound back to its original uh, original position as the forces are relieved and the dentures made by this technique uh, have a tendency to get displaced uh, due to the tissue rebound whenever they are at rest so it, it will be always like whenever uh, you have recorded and you have fabricated denture with the micro compressive technique but as soon as the patient is in rest the denture will be having a tendency to pull out pull downwards because because of the tissue the rebound of the tissues we need to understand the basic histology and anatomy of the tissues whenever you are applying pressure over a compressible tissues like the mucosa first the extracellular fluid a uh, tissue fluid or the lymph and the venous blood is going to be uh, forced out into the neighboring tissues or into their contained vessels if we apply more pressure then the arterial flow that is the blood supply is going going to be stopped and those tissues will be having a compromised blood supply so if we see the drawback of this this is not desirable actually if you are applying pressure onto the tissues and if it is a continuous type of pressure onto the tissues it is going to lead to a compromised blood supply which is definitely undesirable in a complete denture patients so the drawback of this technique is dentures made from such impressions they are not going to fit well especially at rest position and due to continuous pressure as i just explained the tissues will undergo bone resorption so there will be resorption of the bone the bone will be resorbed further and uh, an another drawback of this technique is since we are using a close mouth technique so close mouth technique will not permit bottom molding so another big disadvantage with this type of technique now next technique is the mucostatic technique mucostatic technique uh, was first proposed by richardson and later it was popularized by henry page now failures in the pressure technique that is the drawbacks in the muco compressive technique led to this type of non pressure technique which is a muco static technique now proponents of this technique they describe the interfacial surface tension as the only significant way of retaining the complete denture they they believe that if you are not applying pressures you are just, you are just recording the tissues at rest in the position of rest position then it is best to provide retention for those tissues and it is best for the tissues overall also there is a belief among them that the impression which you take through this technique should only cover the area of the oral cavity where mucous membrane is firmly attached to the underlying bone surface and not where you are having a kind of redundant tissues or a very thick mucosa the main basis of this uh, mucostatic principle is uh, the pascal's law which states that the pressure applied on a confined liquid will be transmitted throughout the liquid in all the direction like for example if you are applying pressure suppose 
in this area in a confined liquid then this pressure is going to be distributed all around likewise the same if you are applying pressure here it will be distributed evenly in to in the entire vessel so proponents of this concept believe that uh, the mucosa is made up of 80% of water which will act as a liquid in a closed vessel however if we see that if we know that uh, this is not possible and this is not true because the tissue fluids can escape under the border of the denture whenever you apply force as i explained you that uh, before in the mucocompressor technique also the extracellular fluid is going to move into the neighboring tissues so there is no question of confinement of this liquid and uh, moreover the mucosa is not a closed vessel and how you are going to make the impression you are going to take an oversized tray and then you are going to take a more fluidy material fluidy impression material and then you are going to place it inside the um, inside inside the mouth and you are going to record the tissues in a rest state not in a compressive way with minimal minimal pressure you are not going to apply any type of pressure onto the tissues this technique uh, basically eliminates all distortion of the old tissues and thus create a denture base that models the unloaded tissues that is what the belief of uh, proponents of this technique is and the retention is entirely dependent on the surface forces of adhesion cohesion cohesion and interfacial surface tension so for this thin film of saliva is necessary border molding is not done in this technique and the impression material of choice here is impression plaster which is least compressive and the drawback for this uh, technique is that it results in denture which is closely adapted to the mucosa of the denture bearing area but it will have a poor uh, peripheral seal that is it will be having a poor uh, retention and denture uh, that will lead to denture instability there will be rocking of the hard tissues and another thing is the tissue health and the denture retention as i told you will be compromised and another uh, another drawback is that you are only recording uh, the the small portion of the denture base area not the complete denture base area so again that will be a problem in uh, this type of technique another type of technique is the selective pressure technique this technique is one of the most accepted technique and this technique was um, advocated by Karl Boucher and it combines the principles of pressure and minimal pressure technique that is both the mucocompressive as well as the mucostatic technique. So the philosophy of this technique is that certain areas of the maxilla and mandible are by nature better adapted for withstanding the additional forces of mastication because if you see a uh, denture base area the entire maxilla or mandible there will be certain areas which are more adapted for bearing the masticatory forces in comparison to some other areas which are not uh, stress bearing areas so basically the impression in this technique is extended over as much as uh, denture bearing areas as possible without interfering with the limiting structures at function and rest and uh, you you have know about the primary stress bearing in the in areas in the maxilla which are the heart palate if you see the heart palate and the posterior lateral slopes of the heart palate that is this region so these are the primary stress bearing areas and the relief areas are the incisive papilla and the mid palatal referee region likewise similarly you have in the mandible primary stress bearing area in the mandible are the buccal shelf region this is the primary stress bearing area and the relief area here is are the sharp mylohyoid ridges and the crest of the alveolar ridges especially if it is a thin knife edge ridges definitely that is the relief area in the mandible so how do you make an impression with this technique now this is achieved by designing uh, the custom tray uh, how, how will you come to that position you are going to take a primary impression or your diagnostic model you are going to make a primary cast onto the primary cast you are going to um, place a kind of a relief you are going to place a relief wax or you are going to place a spacer uh, and you are going to um, relieve certain areas and certain areas will be the uh, 
the stress bearing areas so whenever you are over this you are going to make a custom tray with uh, your acrylic resins and uh, once you have this custom tray with you then uh, you are going to do border molding and then before making final impression you are going to remove this spacer for the additional amount of the uh, impression material to come in and then you are going to take a wash impression so that is how you are going to use this technique so uh, another method of using this technique is whenever you are making a primary impression once you have made the primary impression you can scrape um, with on the primary impression you can scrape those areas which are the relief areas and then you can make a uh, new impression that is the final impression onto the same uh, impression so by doing this you are applying pressure uh, which you are directing to the primary stress bearing areas which are biologically and biomechanically more capable of supporting and distributing the forces and you are relieving certain areas which are not that biologically or biomechanically adapted to bear the masticatory forces so this technique seeks to create a danger base that selectively loads the oral tissues during functioning of the processes thereby optimizing stability and retention of the processes now opponents of these technique uh, they say that uh, it is impossible to record certain areas with different pressure from that applied to the other uh, areas although this is one of as i told you in the beginning also this is one of the most accepted uh, impression technique uh, which is used in fabricating complete dentures so next part of a discussion is spacer spacer designs now spacer design as i told you is is a relief wax or a spacer which is given of uh, wax over the primary cast and then you are going to make a custom tray there are types of spacer designs they can have full spacers which is covering the entire niche bearing areas or you can have partial spacers you can have partially uh, which are covering certain areas they are partial spacers or you can have spacers with tissue stops uh which are 2 mm you give a kind of window in these areas they they are spacers with tissue stops apart from this the material the type of materials which are used for making spacer can be the most commonly uh, used material is the base plate base plate wax you can have tin foil which can be used you can have casting wax which can be used and uh sometimes non asbestos ring liner is also used as a spacer now spacer designs there are various spacer designs which are given by different authors we come first to bouchers spacer design now in this uh 1 mm of base plate wax uh is adapted on the primary cast all around the entire denture bear uh, denture um bearing area that is the basal seat area except the posterior palatal seal area so so this is relieved and in in the entire denture bearing area or basal seat area you are going to adapt 1 mm thickness of uh, base plate wax this is in the maxilla in the mandible uh, you are going to adapt uh, the base plate wax that is 1 mm of base plate wax except in the region of buccal shelf area so here you are not going to uh, apply this wax over this you are going to make uh, the custom trays and then you will be doing your border molding once you have done your border molding then uh, before making impression you are going to remove this base plate wax which we have adapted and uh, you are going to make an escape hole in this area that is the incisive papillary area with a number 6 uh, round burr that that should be of sufficient uh, sufficient uh, width in order to allow and relieve pressure when you are making an impression uh, it it should relieve that pressure there should be no build up of pressure uh, of the impression material when you are making the impression next is the red and moro uh, spacer design in this first of all you are going to block out the undercuts with wax and then you are going to um, you're going to adapt wax which should be 2 mm short of the end that is the uh, the sulcus tip so you're going to uh, keep this wax 2 mm short of the sulcus tip and then once you have adapted this wax 
uh, then you're going to place these uh, holes you're going to make these holes that is the tissue stops in three areas as you can see in the figure these tissue stops are going to four millimeter and they are equidistant from each other now the purpose of these tissue stop is to allow proper vertical seating of the impression tray and to control the thickness of the impression material so these are very important uh, functions of these tissue stops when we are placing these tissue stops on in our uh, spacer designs so this is a design according to red and morrow next is the sherry spacer design now in this uh, design you have the uh, you adapt the base plate wax all around including the uh, positive palatal seal area and you are going to make tissue stops you are going to cut these tissue stops like this in the canine region and in the molar region and at the time of making impression uh, uh, you will be after removing the wax you will be creating a hole in this incisive papillary region in order to allow the excess of impression material to flow out from that similarly you are going to uh, make this uh, spacer design in the lower except the buckle shelf region you are going to leave that region and you are going to adapt spacer uh, one millimeter thickness of base plate wax all around and uh, that is how you are going to make your custom tray over this next spacer design is bernard and levin uh, design in this what you are going to do you are going to adapt uh, two millimeter thickness of base plate wax all around in the um, alveolar ridge region you are not going to adapt this in the palate region so you can see this you are going to adapt the wax here not in the palate region so that is the difference between the other uh, spacer design and this spacer design next spacer design is the helperin design now here in this design in the primary cast what you are going to do you are going to adapt 1 mm thickness of wax in the periphery not elsewhere only in the periphery you are going to adapt the wax here rest the entire cast is same it, it's fine and similarly you are going to do in the lower arch also you are only going to apply 1 mm thickness of wax in the periphery now over that you are going to um, place uh, you are going to make the you are going to fabricate the custom tray and the custom tray will be directly uh, adapting onto the uh, cast except in the periphery so when you are doing the bottom molding you are going to uh, this basically your custom tray will be actually having an internal finish line like this as you remove this wax this will be like an internal finish line here so in this internal finish line you are going to do your bottom molding and once you have done your bottom molding there is no need for making uh, your wash impression it is believed uh, that once you have done this it is a closely fitting tray and you don't require there is no uh, you know space for any impression material so according to this uh, spacer design you don't need to make any wash impression next is the roy mcgregor spacer design here you are going to uh, adapt a sheet of tin foil that is a metal foil in the center covering the incisive papilla and the mid palatal raphe only in this region you are going to apply this and then you are going to fabricate your custom tray so here uh, instead of using wax you are using a tin foil so that is the difference in this technique next spacer design is neel uh, spacer design now according to neel uh, instead of using a wax he used a casting wax of 0.9 mm thickness and he adapted all, all over the entire denture bearing area except the posterior palatal seal area same as the boucher's technique but here instead of using a base plate wax he used a casting wax of 0.9 uh, mm thickness next spacer design is sheldon's design now in this design what he has used he has, he has adapted a uh, base plate wax in this region in the incisive papillary region and uh, he is covering the mid palatal raphe and the shape of this uh, spacer is slightly different uh, than uh, what we were seeing in the other types of designs that is the only difference here rest uh, the fabrication of custom tray and making uh, your uh, final impression is same as the other technique 
another is hartwell technique now in this hartwell technique what he has done he has advocated two 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 methods now in one method is in the primary uh, impression itself as i uh, told you in the selective pressure technique also that in the primary impression uh, he has scraped uh, the the relief areas and um, so as to provide space for the impression material to come in and then he has made the final impression so that was one type second type in which he has not explained about the type of spacer design as such but here in the custom tray um, the spacers once they are removed then he has advocated five holes three in the rugae region three in the rugae region and two in the glandular region so that is what uh, is according to hartwell so these are all the spacer designs given by various authors which are been used now apart from there uh, apart from this you are having a uh, partial spacers now partial spacers can be i spacer or t spacer this is the partial spacer which is given in uh, the center that is the incisive papilla and uh, the mid palatal raphe so it is a small spacer which is given in the center which is covering the relief areas this is i spacer you have t spacer on the right T spacer is used uh, specifically indicated where you are having redundant tissues in this region. So suppose you are having flabby tissues in this region. So you are going to make uh, you after making an impression, primary impression, you are going to uh, selectively make a spacer design in this region. Uh, it is in the form of T, and then you are going to uh, fabricate your custom tray. So that is where you are. Uh, that is the use of this type of spacer. so we have seen uh, in this discussion that uh, various authors have advocated different types of spacer designs so it depends what type of tissues you are having uh, you have to assess uh, the ridge condition the tissues which are covering the ridges and accordingly decide for yourself which is a uh, better type of spacer design and whatever you are comfortable with you can uh, use that type of spacer design also wherever uh, suppose you are having flabby tissues or uh, you have loose tissues so accordingly you can decide and determine which type of spacer design you have to select and accordingly uh, once you have done this then you can make your final impression so with this we come to end of our presentation thank you for watching the video